And there were a lot of people who inspired me. Um, I think of Martin Luther King Jr., mm -hmm. who was a frequent visitor to our house. Uh, our families had been friends for three generations. My father knew his father, and in the old custom of the black community, when uh, Martin came to Crozier in Chester, Pennsylvania, which is this 10 miles down the road from Philadelphia, you know, you always say, now here's a list of all the family friends. Right. If you get in trouble, you need a good meal, you go see him. And so I remember Martin Luther King Jr. coming to our house to have meals on the weekends. What uh, did you make of him then? He was a bright, young uh, preacher. And no no expectation that he would become the Martin Luther King we know today. No, he was just a bright, young divinity student. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I was younger, and he would come by sometime and have meals, and uh, sometimes uh, he would preach at the church as a st student minister. His father would come up, and his mother, uh, you know, Daddy King and Big Mama, as we called mm -hmm. him, and they'd spend the night right there in our home, and he'd come in from seminary, and they'd all come to church, and his father would be preaching. And so I had those kind of role models uh, in my life in ministry. Uh, you know, people who I saw, uh, Luther uh, Cunningham, a Philadelphia preacher who was a civil service commissioner, uh, uh, Dr. Shepard, uh, who was pastor of the Mount Oliver Church, but who had been recorder of deeds in Washington and a city councilman. Uh, Adam Clayton Powell, uh, folks who had ministries that were broader. And Leon Sullivan, uh, who was there in Philadelphia, who started OIC. So I grew up around a group of ministers who taught me that ministry was not just simply something you do on Sunday morning. It's something you do in the streets, it's something you do about housing, it's something you do about economic justice. And so they, along with my father, because my father was a civil service commissioner in Philadelphia as well, uh, and very much involved in politics, taught me about what I call the whole ministry. And finally, my senior year, I decided, stop fighting it. That's really what you want to be, that's really what you ought to be, and that's what God called you to be. And so I stopped fighting it. And that's how I ended up in seminary. And, so, and while you're a Drew, you're assistant pastor at Union Baptist in Montclair, New Jersey. And uh, then you become the senior minister there. And Martin King presides over the installation service. Well, uh, yes, Martin Luther King uh, provided over the installation service. Uh, and so did Daddy King. Uh -huh. uh, Daddy King spoke in the morning at the worship at the church. And then in the afternoon, we had to have the high school because it was a church that only could seat 500 people. And of course, everybody in North Jersey wanted to come. Mm -hmm. So we went to the high school, 3,000 people, and Martin Luther King uh, Jr. was the guest speaker there. But we had present that afternoon, uh, Martin Jr., uh, uh, Coretta, uh, Big Mama, and Daddy King, the whole King family was there. Mm -hmm. And um, I started out my first year in seminary, I did a student ministry with my father. Then I went to a big, prestigious white Baptist church called First Baptist Church. It was the church that Harry Emerson Fosdick uh, built and was his first significant ministry. Mm. And it was from there that Rockefeller uh, got him to come to New York and built Riverside for him. Mm. And I did a year there, and then I met the minister of Union Baptist Church who invited me to come over and preach. Of course, first thing he said, what are you doing here, boy? Mm -hmm. You know, what is, what's a black guy uh -huh. doing as a student minister of this very elite white Baptist church? And I said, well, I wanted to get a different kind of experience, and it was a wonderful experience. And they invited me over to preach, I preached. And afterwards he said, I didn't tell you this, but I'm getting ready to retire, and the deacons asked me to ask you, would you be interested? Mm -hmm. And I was flattered, I said, you gotta be kidding. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is that it worked out, I did uh, a co-ministry with him for one year, and the day I got my seminary degree, I became pastor of the Union Baptist Church, and Martin Luther King came and was there for my installation. 